And the first speaker, let us welcome Dr. Max Lemke. Now, what is our goal here on this pillar on digital innovation hubs? One more. Yeah, the target is, to, is the access to digital technologies and expertise for everybody within working distance for any industry, but with special focus for us on SMEs, mid-caps, and non-tech companies. How? Digital innovation hubs across all Europe provide industry with access to all of this. And we want to network them so we add value by being able to show that a demonstrator in one country is available for people elsewhere and where we, where we bring these actors together, where a competence center in one country could provide competences to a user in another one. So a market of innovation. And when we look at, we often talk about competence centers and innovation hubs, and I just want to say here, the competence centers all is, are the ones who provide everything about the digital competences, access to infrastructure, expertise, <coughs> experimentation, and the digital innovation hubs, and we can discuss that in the panel, digital innovation hubs more offer also the innovation services like access to finance, market intelligence, and the access to the competence center. So competence center is part of an innovation hub. Now, in this whole initiative, this, we cannot, from European research money, set up uh, innovation hubs all over Europe. We have no money for that. So we have to look at what is our role, what is the role of others. And we see a strong role for the regions and member states to establish and reinforce <coughs> competence centers and innovation hubs across Europe with a specific support for the regions yeah, who have no digital innovation hubs yet. So that smells like, uh, like structural funds. So we are promoting that as the policy foresees that structural funds are also used to build up digital innovation hub, hubs to collaborate. And the regions also should collaborate with hubs in other regions because that adds value to everybody. We cannot be competent in everything. We just have to know who is competent and how we link to the other one who is competent. So it's a bit of teaming and not competing all the time only. So added value through working together, even helping in your competition and being strong. Now, Commission, what is the role of the Commission? The role of the Commission is to support this pan-European networking of digital innovation hubs, to share best practices, to share success stories, to support training, but also to support high-level innovation in experiments that are cross-border. And that's what we do here. It's the core work of, of, of I4MS. So experiments that are cross-border where a region would not fund because there's a user from one region and a supplier from another region where the national program would not fund because one of the actors comes from outside the, the, the member state. So that's where European money can help and bring it all together. And we are also seeing it as our role to promote the use of other funds, like we have the Juncker package, and we have the structural funds, and they are foreseen also for funding innovation or for, and for funding digital infrastructures. And we have to more combine that. Have in mind that when we look at a research and innovation program, we can only fund very high level innovation for innovators and early adopters, because we have the excellence paradigm, that's our important point in, 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 in program, whereas the structural funds, they can fund also mainstream innovation, and I think that makes the big difference. And we ask industry to also engage with competence centers. Now, we have done this in the last years, and I4MS was the first initiative that uh, we started in 2013, and this will be the topic of the day. Yeah? So what I do now is just give you a bit of a smell of what we do during the day, today and tomorrow. So don't worry if you don't understand all the details. You should now just get the overview. Yeah? And I'm running quickly through that. I4MS is the initiative for the processes, for the production. Not for the products itself. It's more on the processes. We have 11 large projects with uh, 280 experiments. 75% have a cross-border dimension. And you see here of the 480 actors in this game, uh, 340 are industrial, 75% SMEs, and 65% new in the research and innovation program. So we have an outreach really to actors we normally don't have in research programs. 
Yeah, and that's one of the key successes that we have. And it's all over Europe. We have actors from 29 member states and associated countries involved. Don't tell me we've only got 28 member states. No, there are associated countries in the research program. We have a similar initiative for ICT in products, and that's the right one here on Smart Anything Everywhere. But now just for you to know that there is more, and you can go back to my slides, which, which are public, there are many of these kind of initiatives in the program that we have, I4MS for, proce for, for processes and production, Smart Anything Everywhere for ICT in products, electronics, smart components and systems in product, Feeware, the Feeware Hubs program for, future inter for the future internet dimension based on the Feeware platform, Accord for robotics, Odin for big data, Sesaminet for HPC in industry, Actfast for Photonics, and the, we have the digital kicks, the knowledge innovation centers, the EI from the EIT who who look, who look as well at education, at innovation activities in research as business accelerators, and they have certain different technology foci, focus focus focuses, and the EIT, ICT lab. There's always a, a fight on whether it's faux key, it's not in, in, in Latin as far as I understood. Now, and then we have the Vanguard initiatives, which takes a, an approach of linking regions together under one or the other topic, like, like for example, efficient and sustainable manufacturing. So there's a whole map of I initiatives that's going on. And last but not least, also what my colleagues in DG Grow do in terms of the Somatic Smart Specialization Platform, that looks at partnerships across regions and supporting innovations on in one of the areas across regions, partnerships between regions, European strategic cluster partnerships across clusters. And I've just put this slide up here not to show you now, run to, to you through the details. I just wanted to show we are trying now to bring these activities that, that are on a European level, we try to bring them together in a coherent picture. And this slide is one that I agreed with my colleagues in Grow, DG Grow, to show you, yes, we know what we are focusing on. We know there's work ahead of us to bring this together. Like when I look at that, I4MS looks at the digital transformation of industry. Smart specialization, the smart specialization platform on modernization looks at industrial modernization in general. I4MS at manufacturing at large, they look at all industry. The nature of collaboration is different. We network hubs focused on digital game-changing technologies. In the smart specialization platform on modernization, it's on inter-regional collaboration focused on smart specialization. In particular, on the level of innovation, there's a big difference. We look at leading-edge innovation for innovators and early adopters. And my colleagues more look in with their, with their program together with Digi Regio, look at the broad adoption, from the broad adoption to leading edge innovation, but their major focus is on broad adoption. Yeah, these are two instruments that we are now trying to bring together with the structural funds dimension, with the horizon 2020 dimension, and we try to create a coherent picture out of that. So that's a future vision. Now implementation modalities, my colleagues will run through, I mean, basically, you know that we, we implement these actions like I4MS through cascading funds. That is a simple term for basically, basically saying that an SME that is involved with us in an experiment does not necessarily have to be, become a contractor of the European Commission. Uh, now it's back. It was not me. But instead, we give the money to competence centers who do a contract with these centers, and with this contract, they, they, the ones who uh, run an experiment are not directly working with us, but work only with these, with these competence centers, and that is much less red tape for them. So no direct contact with the European Commission. Yeah? And it's all centered around networks of complementary competence centers who are running experiments with users, with suppliers, and that's the leaves of this market. But this will be explained in more detail later. We know that most of our innovation hubs are centered mostly in highly developed regions. 
So we have recently launched a mentoring and sponsorship program together with the support action, the two support actions we have in I4MS. They will explain you more. Just, I, just, just 1.2 million euros, not, a, not that much. And end of the year, we plan to have another 2 million for such activities. And they are just looking to get nodes in less developed regions to also join join the program and associate themselves to I4MS because in order to broaden the outreach. And we had 36 proposals around which we will select around 25. I understand this will be announced today or tomorrow. Um, and there are different technology, there's different technology focus on those proposals, but most is in CPS and IoT, but also some on HPC cloud modeling and simulation and robotics, less on laser. And we have a new round end of the year, we expect for, but we, there we would focus really on the EU 13. That means the Eastern Europe plus Croatia who have joined with the last, uh, when the EU was extended, because there we have in particular white spots on the map. Now, this is the slide that we'll discuss tomorrow afternoon. That's the evolution where we go, and I will not go through that now. I just want to, oh. This was my last slide, I had an empty one afterwards. So we will do that tomorrow, and with this I would like to uh, close, in a sense saying what is this meeting about. This meeting more or less runs you this, through this cycles of I4MS. So we will start with taking stock of what we have achieved with phase one. You will see success stories, you see them in your brochure. Second, we say with the project that started beginning of this year, how we organically grow the I4MS ecosystem. Second topic of the day. Then we will have a call open end of the year closing in January and there we will extend I4MS again by 35 million. So we'll discuss here what we expect there and work together how we can achieve that. And last not least in work program 2018 to 20, we, have, we will in the next half year plan what we do there and we will discuss how we support further the implementation of the Digitizing European Industry Initiative of Commissioner Oettinger with initiatives like I4MS and also I4MS in particular. So we go through all these four phases in, in, in this event and I hope that you get inspired by that and I also hope that we get inspired for the last phase and get your feedback on what worked and what did not work. Thank you very much.